Hi, I'm Denshi. Now, as I'm recording this video, I've just turned 18, and I want to take some time to reflect on my experiences as a minor online. Now, just before you panic, I was never abused or manipulated or anything like that. This isn't one of those types of videos. However, I do want to reflect and share some stories and some anecdotes from my experience growing up uh, on the internet, using it as a kid, that I think my audience might find useful. I know a lot of you guys are young, a lot of you guys watch me and you're, you know, you grew up on the internet, or at least you you are still growing up on it. And I wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about that in today's video through my own lens, of course. And I hope that you find this perspective interesting. So I guess I'll start where I started. I must have been five or, or, or four or six, I don't remember. But when I was a kid, my dad had a laptop that he was using to study for work and I would go on it. Initially, I was playing like little flash games and stuff like that, you know, Super Mario Online on, on friv.com or something. But then eventually I built up to using websites like YouTube and, and Newgrounds and watching flash animations. And I love that as a kid. I still, I still kind of like them now, but obviously as a kid, there's like that magic to it of oh like these these stories are being told to me it was like you know free cartoons just watch cartoons whenever you want to on demand as a kid you view the internet a lot like a toy i remember my sisters used to play those little barbie dress up games online i guess i viewed it also kind of like a toy but i think a lot of people don't mature in that perception of it a lot of people as they grow up it goes from the internet being a toy to their phone being a toy and you know constantly being on social media kind of like this little pacifier it's they don't view it beyond that but as a kid i i kind of started developing more ideas about the internet i started developing this conception that oh i could actually use this to do useful good things i remember my dad actually let me have like a little old laptop that my sisters had it was like this miniature little netbook thing because netbooks were the the hip thing at the time it was just to teach me about how to use a computer and stuff i must have gotten like so many viruses on that computer and i remember my dad tried to get like windows vista uh, burnt on like a little cd so he could put it in and, and and reinstall windows vista but we were never able to when i had that little laptop i would organize it very well clean it and have like a little mouse and little speakers and everything it was all it was all nice so i always i always w liked the idea of using computers and, and internet for work uh, but a lot of kids they go on it and because i'd say because of the advent of mobile phones and tablets and stuff they view it a lot more like a toy it's like entertainment so if you're watching this video and you're like that i just want to tell you like if you're out here and you're uh, you're like that you know you view the internet mostly as a form of entertainment try to rethink that because it can be very, very useful in other ways. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about emails and messages, you know, work-related stuff. I'm talking about sharing your thoughts online. And as a kid, I remember I used to write little articles and put them on, like, Google Blogger. That was, that was my thing. I've lost all of them now, but that was really fun at the time. And even back then, I was thinking about, you know, how can I share my ideas? How can I talk to the public with this? Because that, that's kind of what it's all about. So as time went on, I, I must have been 9 or, or 10 when I uploaded my first video to YouTube. It wasn't actually uploaded by me. It was uploaded by my friends. But I, I filmed it. And they were, like, throwing around this can of uh, Mirinda, like this little orange soda thing, on, on a table. And it was, like, these cool trick shots to it or whatever. I don't, know what it, I don't know what we called it. But I uploaded that on my friend's phone on the YouTube app. And um, it was it was a fun it was a fun experience I think making videos as a kid. But when you do that, when you upload a video to YouTube, you're terrified because you're like, oh no, what did my parents find out? But no, nah, my parents are fine with it. I, I asked for permission. I, I was a good boy. But yeah, um, as time went on, I I began uploading videos to that channel that me and my friend zone. Eventually, I was pretty much the only person uploading them on there. And it was clear that I liked doing it. You know, it was clear to me personally that I enjoyed doing it for it. A lot of people, um, I saw this video by Wavetro where he talks about his experience quitting YouTube because he was a YouTuber that made these 3D animations online and, and other little stop motion videos as a kid. And he felt a lot of pressure to perform for his audience and to get videos out and stuff like that. And I was really lucky as a kid not to feel that much pressure. It just it just didn't come to me that I should feel pressure to an audience because for me, I just did it because I really enjoyed doing it. Now, speaking of, of things that come to you, I want to take a minute to talk about the importance of having a good parental influence when you're using the internet. As I mentioned before, my, my sisters used to play on those little Barbie sites and stuff. Like My parents showed us that. My parents tried to um, guide us through using the internet in a constructive way. They weren't always there, but they were definitely trying their best to get us to 
use the internet well. But of course, you can't teach everything through direct instruction, and a lot of it was just guiding us morally in every aspect of life, which helps you be guided morally on the internet as well. A lot of people let their morality be manipulated and warped by the internet, by the various influences and things that can hook you and grab you and, and change you in, in, in different ways. And I think I was extremely lucky. I was extremely privileged. And every, every day, I, I just kind of remember how privileged I was to have had present parents throughout my entire childhood, to have had a present father figure, you know, uh, my father. And a lot of that comes down to them being able to impart ideas in you which stay extremely firm. I was lucky enough to have had the ability to have had the, you know, strength to stand my ground on the internet, to not be manipulated and controlled by all the influences that are out there, whether it's the companies trying to turn you into a social media addict or people who are literally trying to manipulate you. Although in my own experience, I've never experienced something as bad as that, but a lot of people do, a lot of young people too. And the reason I say this is because a lot of people who spend a lot of time on the internet tend to be people who maybe do not have that same parental influence. Maybe they are not in the best situation home-wise. And it's hard to navigate through that on your own. As a kid, having the privilege of having someone, your parents, who can guide you through life um, is really immeasurable. And like I said, every day I find out more and more how truly privileged I was to have that. And if you do not have that, if you're watching this video and you do not have that same privilege, I, I just want to give like one warning, which is it's very easy for that void left by the lack of that influence to be filled by a very negative influence, to be filled by, there's, I, I like, I love to say this, but there's like a bunch of YouTube and internet like father figures online. And it, it really creeps me out on a personal level as someone who had a dad to think that people are letting themselves be profoundly manipulated by people like this online. I don't want to name any names or go into specifics because I think a lot, a lot of people are like this, but you should look for influences everywhere in life, as, as a normal person does, but you should look for influences everywhere that guide you towards morality, which is hard because you don't know what morality is many times in life, but I mean, the best thing you can do is try. A lot of people stop trying at a, at a certain point, and that's, that's really what stops people dead in the tracks. With that aside, moving on, like I said, I was uploading videos and I was uploading more and more videos to that channel. As time went on, I started a new channel. I must have been 13. No, in fact, I was 13. I remember the date. And I remember I was in biology class and we were talking about something like photosynthesis or whatever. It's funny because I, I did biology in high school, so I should I should probably know this, but I, I had the idea in that class of, hey, you know, maybe I should make a YouTube channel. So what should I call it? And I wanted to make videos with drawings. I wanted to draw things and, and talk about things using illustrations and stuff. And so I named the video, uh, sorry, I named the channel Denshi Draws. And eventually I renamed it to Denshi Video. I had a lot of time to think about it before. It was one of those things where, oh, I can plan my channel out rationally, which by the way is terrible. In the same way that planning a society rationally in real life, when like, I don't know, communist countries try to plan out their economies and it fails, the same thing happens when you try to plan out a YouTube channel. It almost always does not turn out the way that you want it to. But I'm glad I did that because although I'm not happy that I was never able to really pursue art further or gain an audience for my art and my drawings, I was able to pursue my love of well, love, my, I guess, my passion for computers and computer science and Linux and stuff further with my audience on this channel. And for that, I, I'm forever grateful. And when you're a kid and when you upload videos at a young age like 13, it's very easy to let yourself um, fall into the any kind of scrap of fame that you get. A lot of like crazy immature behavior online happens because people are not used to getting attention. But like I said earlier, maybe it's connected to that parents thing that I said about having a present father figure, but I had the attention I needed as a kid, and so I never felt like I needed to appeal to any audience. Uh, but anyways, 
Well, going further, I was never someone who communicated with people online. I was always told to be extremely wary of people online. I mean, if you guys if you guys saw my video where I showcased my old art and drawings, I have this poster that I made when I was like in fourth grade where I say, hey, don't don't go online and talk to people. Don't sign up for Tumblr. <laughs> I don't know why I put Tumblr on. I don't, how did I know what Tumblr was? I was like nine. It was the only social media name that I remembered when I was in class, I guess. Anyways, I would eventually go on to start doing that when I turned 13. Uh, various platforms, Discord, even Matrix eventually. But um, I think obviously that's the most dangerous vector for somebody to attack a child you know and uh, i was lucky i was extremely privileged unlike a lot of people to never have been abused or manipulated over something like that uh, however it can happen to people and uh, i guess i'm coming back to that parents thing i said earlier but part of that is is having that fulfillment and that attention given to yourself that stops you from falling into trying to seek attention from other people because a lot of it is attention seeking behavior um, which the, the thing is people who want to hurt children who want to manipulate anyone really seek that out specifically they seek out people who want attention because people who want attention they have a lot more retention like they want to retain the friends and contacts they have whether online or in real life and that makes it a lot harder to kind of separate two people because if one of the people, one of the one of the persons is uh, trying to seek attention, and the other person wants to feed into that, then it creates this extremely hard to break kind of bond. That's just advice for you kids out there. If uh, you know, I, God forbid, you're experiencing something like that, but I'm just saying in general, those are the elements that mix together to create that toxicity. That's that's what happened. That's where it comes from. It comes from one person seeking attention, the other person. Uh, using that as levity really not all cases are like that but i was lucky enough never to have had a terrible case of that i still did some pretty stupid things you know as all kids do online but i think i, I like i said i'm privileged enough to be able to laugh over it because nothing really bad happened I, another thing that i wanted to note is when you're a minor online uh, in my sort of spaces like linux technology sort of spaces it's hard to find people your own age it's difficult because a lot of people are just a lot older because you have a very niche kind of interest and kids are not interested in like linux and stuff you know so I, I found a few people who were about my age but most people were a lot older and so that was a good experience for me because i got to meet a lot of people who were mature and experienced in the field you know the most self-hosting i'd done when I was a kid, was like running a Minecraft server for my friends and port forwarding on like a little router and running it overnight on my dad's computer. But when I met, you know, some people online who were able to actually help me get a web server running and stuff like that, I would never be able to figure that out on my own. I would take like a long time to figure that out on my own, you know? But I had that help. I had that first-hand help. It's a little bit bad because you, you struggle to really find your own place online. And that brings me to another important thing I'm going to talk about, which is this idea that kids don't really have a space online anymore. Uh, what I mean by that is, let me, let me explain it to you this way, conspiracy theory time. So when you're a kid, when you're like a baby, you're a baby, you know, you're treated like an infant, um, you grow up. And I think around the ages of seven to eight, that's when society and, and people around you, at least in the Western Hemisphere or Western-influenced countries, tries to get you to become like immediately like an adult and you can see this in many things just look at like clothing for kids if you look at the clothing like little girls and i guess little boys to a lesser extent and the clothing that gets promoted to them when they're seven compared to what they get given when they're like four or five is completely different it's like mature it's like adult clothing we're dressing kids up like adults we're treating them like adults, we're expecting them to be mature like adults, then really they should be allowed to be kids. And online, there are many kid-friendly spaces, but the problem is as you grow up and become a teenager, there are no spaces anymore. Now, I know that sounds like an exaggeration, but I really mean that. How do I say this? There's no appeal to the demographic of teenagers because most teenagers just want to skip to adulthood, so they go straight to the adult spaces. And that's so incredibly dangerous. And that lack of like a middle ground is what I think that undermines society and teenagers a lot because if they had that middle ground, if they had that place to take those steps towards adulthood, that would be a lot better. But 
That, that's just what I'm saying, you know. Out of my own experience, I've never found a place like that. It was always either extremely mature or extremely, you know, for children. I think the last two years of my life, I've had the privilege of really spending a lot of time to think to myself, to come to my ideas about how I'm going to take my life forward, so I'm going to how I'm gonna be, you know, going forward. Not that I would say it's really important to have a lot of self-philosophy or whatever. Life is random. Everything is unplanned. Like I said earlier, you can't plan a YouTube channel, let alone plan your life perfectly out. You should just have a moral compass to guide you through it and everything else is just, it happens. At the end of the day, I think as you mature both in knowledge and in morality, the internet becomes an increasingly polarizing place because you can go on it and you can immediately click on like two things and see the most morally reprehensible manipulative horrible behavior and like everywhere or then you can go to some other places and see some wonderful behavior but only be fed positivity so it's really a machine and uh, the way that social media has been engineered it's basically a machine which feeds you whatever it thinks will keep you hooked on a technical level, the internet is incredibly impressive and you can use it to communicate with people half across the globe. And a lot of people forget about that. A lot of people forget that really this is about people communicating. This isn't about a screen. But anyways, I really wish everybody watching this video well, uh, whether you're a minor, whether you're 50, whether you're 60, whether you're whatever age, you know, as long as you're not like really young. If you're like, I don't know, nine, you probably shouldn't be watching these Linux videos. Go outside and like have fun, you know, don't, don't, don't sit here and learn about how to self-host or whatever, unless you have your parents' permission or something. I don't know. At the end of the day, life is, you know, it's fleeting. You, you, don't, you can't spend your little time that you're awarded on this vessel wasting it on some, like, Discord chat or something like that, you know. Before I end this video, I want to just list uh, the names of my friends uh, who were either on streams or maybe I talked to them in private or something like that online, just as a little thing to end this video with. If you're not in this list, I'm sorry, I, I must have, you know, I just, I just compiled it now and I dumped as much as I could from my memory, but I might have forgotten, like, a few names here and there. If you, if you, think you've been forgotten, put your name in the comments and I'll add you in the description. I'm so sorry because anyways, he here they are. Adarsh, AJS, August, Azatsky, CMD Rabbit, Comms, Corbin, Diego, Dragon King, Emmy, Finax, Expo, Julian, KC, Levon, Lyo Convoy, Luna, Michael, Mr. Blackmore, Nick, Poppy, Raju Jam, Randy, Vicky, Wavetro, Webb, William 1 and 2, like both, I know a lot of Williams here, Xavier, Zedimation, Zergood, and Zipzap. Those are all the people um, I had on this list. Once again, if, if I've forgotten you, I'm so sorry, just leave your name in the comments and I'll add it in the description. I've been Denshi. Goodbye.